Good morning. Uh, this is Johnny. And my name is Kim Yi. And we're back again for another video on, on our theme of the rights of children. Uh, this morning uh, we will be talking about one specific right, one very important right which is very close to my heart and also Kim Yi's heart is the right of education. And the, the Convention on the Rights of the Child from the United Nations uh, has got two chapters on this. Chapter 28 says, every child has a right to an education. Primary education should be free. Secondary education, sorry, secondary and higher education should be available to every child. Children should be encouraged to go to school to the highest level possible. Discipline in schools should, be, should respect child's rights and never use violence. And chapter 29 says, children's education should help them fully develop their personalities, their talents and abilities. It should teach them to understand their own rights and also to respect other people's rights, cultures and differences. It should help them to live peacefully and to protect the environment. So these are some very important rights of, of children. And I could sit here and talk to you a lot about education in Cambodia, but we've got Kim Yi, who has only just finished uh, going through the Cambodian education system, only 20 years old. She only left school a few years ago. So she's got a lot more of experience and relevant experience than me so I think it's better if Kim Yi can tell us a little bit about education in Cambodia. So Kim Yi, you're 20 years old, 15 years ago you were five years old and uh, did you join school at five years old or six years old? Six years, six years old. Six yes. years old, so 14 years ago you joined school. Yeah. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about primary school in Cambodia? Tell me about your day, how, did the, how, did, how does the day start? What time do you wake up? What time do you go to school? Oh. When I study at primary school, I get up at 6 o'clock. Wow. And 6 o'clock, so yes. that's a bit early, isn't it? Yes, and after that, I prepare myself to go to school at uh, 6.45. 6.45? Yes, because I spend 10 minutes to walk to school. Wow, okay, what time does school start? At 7 o'clock. 7 a.m., so you're not, your school's not so far away from your house? Um, Yes, it's not too far. Okay, and did you walk with your sisters or did you walk uh, with your friends? Yes, with my friends. Okay, and so 7am 7, 7 you joined school. Uh, what happens at 7am? Um, we start class at 7 o'clock okay. until 7.45 and we have break 15 minutes. You only study for 45 minutes and you get a break? Yes. Wow, okay, and then what time, do you, what time does school finish? Until finish until uh, eleven o'clock. So seven o'clock until eleven o'clock. Yes. So for only only four hours. Yes, only we study only half day. Wow. Well, that sounds good, doesn't it? I think the boys and girls in the UK study a bit longer than that. So Monday until Friday, you study seven o'clock until eleven o'clock. Uh, no, no. It's uh, I study from Monday to Saturday. Oh, so that's a little bit different, isn't it? Uh, so in the UK, you study five days, but in Cambodia, they study six, six days. days yeah. Six days. But the day is a little bit shorter, it's only four hours long. Uh, so you study in the morning. Uh, does, it teach, does the school only open in the morning or does it open in the afternoon also? Uh, we have two times. Like, uh, like, example, this month, if I study in the morning, next month, I need to study at the afternoon. Ah, we so there's two, two yes. sessions. Two yes, sessions. So yes. sometimes you study in the morning. Sometimes yes. you study in the afternoon, yes. but only study one time each day? Yes. Oh, okay, yes. yeah. So that's at primary school. And in primary school, how many subjects do you study? Uh, we have four subjects. Okay, what's subject number one? We have uh, Khmer language. Khmer language, yeah. Science. Science, yeah. We have social, uh, sociology. Sociology, yeah. <laughs> and mathematics. Mathematics. Yes. One of these, sociology, is something which maybe is a little bit, it's a new word maybe for some children. Can you explain a little bit about what happens in sociology? How, what do you learn about oh, in sociology? We learn about our culture. Okay. We learn about the society. Yeah. Yeah, about, and also another society also. Okay, so learn about about culture, uh, about how to be a good member of society, oh, yes. about being polite, having yeah. manners, about how to be a good Cambodian woman. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So that's primary school, um, seven o'clock until eleven o'clock in the morning, and then that's from age six until age twelve. Twelve. Okay. After twelve, what do you do? Oh, we study secondary school. So primary school then secondary school. Twelve. Yes. Year, age twelve until age maybe fifteen. 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 Okay. Yes. And what happens in, in, 
in secondary school. Is that also just the morning, seven o'clock until eleven o'clock? Yes. Okay. But we have more subject. When I study at elementary school, we have only four subject. Mm -hmm. But now I have. 10 subjects. 10 subjects, that's a lot more. Uh, yes. So I guess you've got things like geography and chemistry and history. Yes. Yes. Thing, thing, also English. It? Oh, English, English also? Chocolate, yes. Is that where you learn to speak English? Yes. <laughs> so that's, that's secondary school. And then in the afternoon, what do you do? Uh, we have extra class. Okay. And but uh, we need to pay money. Oh, okay, yeah. So the classes in the morning for, for schools are free, but there's extra classes, extra tuition in the afternoons, which is provided, but sadly you have to pay for those. They're not, they're not free. So maybe there's some children don't have money, they can't join. Is that right? Or they, does, ever, does everyone join? Uh, they can join because they can ask the teacher and the teacher, uh, the, the teacher discount for them. Okay, oh, that's good. That's good. So it's, it means it's available. It's available for lots of for lots of children, even if they have money or not. Yes. And then, so that secondary school is um, from age 12 until age 15. So after 15, what do you do? We study high school. High school, another one. So primary school, secondary, secondary school, school and high, high school. school. Okay. <laughs> high school is age 15 until 18. 18 years old. And some with 10 subjects again? Yes, we still have 10 subjects. Okay. But we, we need to study hard. Why? Because... Uh, it is almost time to have an, uh, an examination. Okay, and this, this is state examination, so if you do well in the state examination, you can, um, you can afford to, maybe you can go to university. Or you yes. Can, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's a little bit, about, uh, a little bit, bit about, about schools in Cambodia, primary school, secondary school, and uh, high school in Cambodia. And as uh, I'll share some, I've got some photographs of some typical uh, Cambodian schools. Gimme, you said you travelled, you walked to school uh, for primary school. Yes. How did you go to secondary school and high school? By, did, by bike. By bicycle? Yes, by bicycle. That's, that's quite common in Cambodia. If you see a, a government school, at the front of the government school, you'll see a few hundred, a few hundred bicycles in front of the school. Because the schools sometimes can be, can be quite far away from where people live. And their mums and dads don't have cars don't have motorbikes to take them to school, so the children have to travel to school by themselves. Sometimes you see some very small children walking a very long distance to get to school. You feel sorry for them and you just hope that they're safe enough. Uh, but the, as Kim, you talked about, uh, the afternoon lessons, sometimes the afternoon lessons you have to pay for. And, <clears throat> and that does, in the countryside, sometimes that means that some kids can't, can't join. They don't have enough money to pay for it. And what's, what Care for Cambodia, as my, our organisation does, we provide extra classes in the afternoon. But we don't do the 10 subjects, we've got uh, extra classes in, in Cambodian language, in mathematics, and in uh, sociology. And we provide that so we want kids to not fall behind so that we can support the government school system and we can keep kids in school and we provide the extra, the extra little boost they need to keep them, keep them in school. One time a year, uh, we provide school packs to our children. And the school pack has got a school bag. What else can we get? It's got school, school uniform. Yes. And it's pen, got pens. Book. Yeah. Pen, books, pencils. Yes. And these are things, boys and girls, it doesn't cost a lot of money to buy these, buy these packs. It costs us about maybe $15, $16, which is maybe about, in the UK money, is about 12 or 13 pounds. It's not a lot of money, but sometimes that money is too much for poor families and they can't afford to buy the school uniform or the school bag for the kids to go to school. So at Care for Cambodia we provide those materials so that kids can go to school, so that all kids have opportunities to go to school and that all kids have the opportunity to, to achieve their potential. They can hope and they can dream and say when I'm big, when I'm big I want to be a teacher or I want to be a doctor or I want to be a policeman and they can dream and they can achieve those dreams. And that's what we want to see. Please don't think that, that children in poor countries are not so clever. I have met many kids who are from poor families who are extremely clever and are extremely hardworking. I've got one friend here who came from a very poor family. When she was young, before she went to school, she walked along the streets and she picked up rubbish. And she picked up rubbish to sell plastic or sell cardboard to a recycling shop so that she and her family could make a little bit of money to buy food. 
And she did that every day before she went to school. Last year, this friend of mine got married and she was so beautiful on her wedding day. But she studied all the way through school and Care for Company helped her to get a scholarship to go to university. And she studied medicine at university. And two years ago, she graduated as a doctor. And that is a little girl, a little skinny girl, a little skinny, dirty girl walking the streets, picking up rubbish. And now she's a doctor. And it's such a beautiful story, such a beautiful girl and a beautiful story. And it shows that people can achieve. They can achieve special things. They can achieve wonderful things if they work hard and if they have opportunity. And that's what we want to do. That's a, and that's a great story that we love to share uh, of transformation of people's lives changing beyond what they could dream of whenever they were young. So, oh, I'm poor, I could, never, I could never do that. We say, no, no, don't limit yourself. If you have a dream, you follow your dream. And Care for Company, we will try to help them, but they help themselves also. So that's what we do. We want to see children and we want to see young people achieve their potential and stay in school as the, the, the Charter for, for Human Rights, for Child Rights says, that children should stay, as lo stay in school as long as possible. That's what we believe. And we believe that education, as Kimmy said at the start, education is so powerful to change the individual, yes. to change their families, and to change their societies, and hopefully change Cambodia. A few videos ago, we talked about Cambodia being a developing country. And we believe that education is so important to help Cambodia develop. And the government is trying so hard to invest in education, but it's starting from a low place. And it needs organisations like Care for Cambodia to help them, to help kids in the rural Cambodia, out in the provinces which are far away from schools, to help educate the children and help teach the children and their parents about the importance of education. So that's our dream. We want to see kids have opportunities that they can do special things, they can achieve great things if they work hard and if they have the opportunities. Like Kim Yee was able to say in school from grade one all the way to grade 12, and that's not normal, that's not normal. It should be more normal than it is, but it's not so normal. And we want to see so many kids be able to stay in school and achieve their dreams. So hopefully that's something that gets you excited. It gets us excited to see kids doing special things. I hope that's something that gets you excited also, to see that we're working to provide for the rights of children. They can have an education like Education in the UK, where it's free and it's, it's good quality education. And we want to have other children in Cambodia have, that, have those same rights so that they can, they can harness their potential and achieve special things. So that's all for today. I will say goodbye in English and Kimi will say goodbye in, in Cambodian. Uh, so we'll, we'll see you next time and on the next video. So goodbye from me. To Rivlin.